All right, fellow fixers, we got a good day. I'm Jeremy Schick, and I am a fixer. I found a TV on the side of the road, and we're gonna try to fix it. So I found two different TVs uh, before on the side of the road, and I fixed them for like 20 bucks. So hopefully I can do the same on this one. I think it's like a, I don't know, 55 inch or 65 inch. It's an LG, but come on, let's see if we can do it. Okay, so this is an LG 55 LN 5400. So I'm guessing that 55, that's probably 55 inch. Um, like I said, a couple disclaimers here. So first of all, I'm gonna crack this open and I've already done a little bit of work on here trying to figure out what the problem is. But disclaimer, there is a lot of DC voltage on these TVs. So if you're gonna try this, uh, do it at your own risk. I'm not going to be responsible. It can be dangerous. Like I said, there's a lot of voltage. I'm going to try to show you what I did to replace um, the other TVs and hopefully this one. And, um, you know, if you want to risk it, you can. But like I said, I had two 55 uh, inch, I think they're, they might be plasma TVs. Um, same model, somebody threw away two of them, and I got both of them fixed for $50 total, and they've been running for over two years now. So, uh, let me crack this up, and there's just a series of screws along the outside edge. I'm going to go ahead and take those off, and then we will see what's on the inside. Okay, so I got the screws off and I'll tell you I've already had this apart and the reason I already had it apart was that um, I've already figured out what I think is wrong with it and ordered the part. So some of these pieces are already off. But let me go ahead and pull off the cover. Okay, now listen, I don't know a lot about these things, but what I do know is that there's two main parts. There is the power board, which is here, and then there's the video board, which is here. You can tell the difference because the video board has your coax input and your HDMIs and that kind of stuff. Now, what this TV was doing was it would, it had a light on the front, but it would not turn on. Uh, it had a little red light, but it would not turn on. Now, what I've figured out, what I know from working on these TVs before, is that on the power board, power comes in right here. And I'll put this on there through a power outlet. So I could plug that in. Whenever I plug that in, it's going to energize this board. So it does whatever it does. And then there's always a main connector that comes out of it and goes to the power board. And that's this main cable right here. And let me see if I can take this off and show you. On the board somewhere, there's going to be this little box right here. And if you can read that box, it's basically a pin diagram showing you what each of these metal pins on this connector should be. And if I can zoom in, I don't know if this camera is going to pick it up or not. I'll just read it to you. It's basically telling you that the first pin is ground, then the second pin is 12 volts, second, third pin is 12 volts, and then there's a ground, and then there's a 24 volt a ground, and then there's a 3.5 volt, a 5.5 volt, and a power on or standby. One of these is the standby. Okay, so just so you can get a feel for what I was talking about um, with the voltage meter, I went ahead and plugged this in. It's on DC, so the power is actually plugged in and it has power. Let's see if I can set this up so you can see it. 
And what I'm doing is if I put my uh, black sensor on any of these screws, which are grounded, like so, now I can go through these different pins. So if I touch this pin right here, you notice I've got 12 volts. Next one, 12 volts. Here you go, 3.5, which is a standby bolt. So that's all you're doing. You're just going through the pins on there to verify that the voltages are what they should be for whatever the label is telling you it should be. All right, let me show you something else. This works on computers and on TVs. So I had power, I had a little light on um, this little front sensor. And if I unplug it, it probably won't work now. See that little red light comes on? It means there's still some power in this board. Before you do anything, if I reach over here and hold the power button in for just a few seconds with the power cord unplugged, it's going to dissipate any power that is in that board. Same thing works on a computer. If you disconnect the power cord from the computer, you can hold the power button in and it'll discharge. All right, so I went through that entire pin diagram and verified that the voltages were correct for each individual pin. So what that tells me is more than likely the power board is correct. There's nothing wrong with the power board because it's outputting the correct voltage. So what I have to do now is swap out that video board, cross my fingers, and I hope that this TV is going to come back on. All right, now I went ahead and disconnected these cables and you can see here there's just basically two little push tabs on either side and it'll pop right out. Same thing on this one. This one, it's on top, so you pushed, you pushed down on this one and pull it out. Same thing here, push down and pull out. So now that I've got this off, I'm gonna take these screws out. So now I can open up this new box and what you'll see is somewhere on this board, in this case, it's down here on this particular one, there's going to be a model number. It says EAX6504910 and in parentheses 1, which is this exact same part number. So let me pull this out of the box. I'm going to take this piece and just snap it on. And again, it just goes through like so. And these little clips, these little clips right here clip in. And that's the piece. Now I can put it back on here. And there you go. Now I can put this all back together and give it a shot. Alright, fellow fixers, moment of truth. Put new batteries in this, and a little red light on the bottom came on. Uh oh. It is not working. Which tells me that it's probably the backlight, which is too bad. That little $40 board didn't fix it. I can see a little bit of a flicker. Just flashed right there. And then the light goes off. I guess I gotta see how much a uh, backlight is for these. Figure out if it's even worth going any further. But, hey, you know, that's what happens sometimes. Sometimes you try to fix something and it just doesn't go how you want it to. All right, so this was gonna be the last I was going to give up, but I decided to keep giving it a try, try to figure out what's going on. And I think what I figured it out is the TV is on and I'm pulling up the menu button. Actually, this is, if 
function. I don't know if you can see it right there, but I actually have something that says this function is not available coming on the screen when I mash one of these buttons by using a flashlight. And so what that is telling me, you see it there? Is that the TV is functioning, but the backlight is not. So, this is an LED TV. Alright, so I did some more research online, and what I figured out was that this uh, brand TV, or this model TV, is an LED TV. So, typically you're going to have either plasma, LCD, or LED. This particular model is an LED. Now, because I could shine a light onto the TV, and there was actually an image there, then it sounds like the LED driver board is bad, or the LED driver, I guess you just call it LED driver. Alright, well I thought this video was going to go one way and it went a different way. And what I figured out is that on this particular model, and you can notice here, see where this says LED? The LED driver is built into the power supply board or the power board. Alright, so here's what I determined. I put my, I plug the cord in, turn my voltmeter on, turn the TV on, made sure this little red light came on. And then I tested the voltage on this LED wire going out. There's an LED plus and another LED plus because this is a bigger TV. Some of the smaller 32 inch models of this only had one LED, uh, LED plus. And it's getting 84 volts. And so that from what I'm researching is normal, which means that this power supply board is fine. And what the problem is are the actual LED strips that run behind this metal part. So, um, what I'm going to have to do is order the LED strips and replace what's there. I guess that's a pretty common failure with this model TV. And you have to replace the LED strips, then you have to update the firmware so that you don't have issues with that in the future. All right, so what I want to talk about was the voltage. I did a little more research on it. So essentially what I did there was test the voltage on the power board because the LED driver is built into it. And I said it got 84 volts. So 84 volts is normal. That's good. If it got zero volts, then that would probably indicate that the power board was bad or the inverter, the LED driver board was bad. Uh, if it got more than 84 volts, then most likely it leads to uh, those same LED strips. And uh, 84 volts, again, leads to the LED strips. So basically, if it's 84 volts or higher, it's probably the LED strips. If it's um, under 84 volts, zero volts, low voltage, then it's probably the power supply board if they're integrated. Or it's the uh, LED driver board. So anyway, I wanted to put this in here because I didn't really talk about that too much. So the problem is that a lot of places are out of stock on those LED strips because it is such a, a common problem. So I'm going to have to either A, scrap it, say it's not worth replacing, or try to find those strips or wait till they're off a of back order and try it. 